Are you a childless millennial? Do you want to get an annual pass to Disneyland, but not sure if you'll look weird coming here by yourself? I'm Alex the Historian. Usually on my YouTube channel you can see me talk about Disneyland history, or even just have vlogs where you can see me at the park enjoying my day. Well, I happen to be one of you. And uh, there was a time where I felt like I wanted to have an annual pass, but I would most likely be going by myself a lot, and I didn't want that to look weird. And one day, I scrounged up the courage and the pocket change to get an annual pass to Disneyland and decided, you know what, I'll get one, I'll figure out what it's like to be here by myself, and if I don't like it, I don't have to renew. Of course, it is expensive. Now, for those of you watching and you already have an annual pass or maybe you don't care, I'm not here to sell you an annual pass. That's not what I'm doing. I'm just here for the people who have thought about getting an annual pass, but were too afraid to do it. So what can a person who's here all by themselves do at Disneyland and still have fun? Well, I'll show you. Now the first thing I do when I get to Disneyland is I go have breakfast. Now there's a small number of breakfast places in the park and outside the park in the rest of the resort, uh, but I usually go to Red Rose Tavern because they generally have things that I like. That being said, you don't even have to eat breakfast, you don't have to, have to do anything in this order, but this is what I do and so that's what I'm here to show you. So anyway, breakfast is the first thing I do. Now when you enter the park, you have the option to ride either the Disneyland Railroad, which is right up here and I'll show you in a second, or you can get on one of the Main Street vehicles, such as the fire truck, the omnibus, which is parked right over there, or the horse-drawn streetcar. Either way, it's actually pretty fun to ride by yourself because a lot of times you can get a seat all to your own. Um, and especially if you get here early in the morning, like when the park opens, there's not very many people. Now, this is good advice for just about anybody. If you have some kind of disability that might hinder your enjoyment of the day, such as, you know, being unable to walk too long of a distance, or perhaps you can't climb stairs, you might want to visit guest relations to see what they can do to help your day out. I can't mention anything specific because everybody has a completely different case, and, I, and uh, a lot of people might say, well, I've heard you can get a front of the line pass. Well, that's not true. Guest Relations doesn't do front of the line passes, but they do do special passes that help people with disabilities get on rides with better ease. So anyway, the train for the Disneyland Railroad has just arrived. One of the things that I love to do, being by myself, is riding the Disneyland Railroad. Especially when you get here early in the morning, there's almost all the seats are completely available. You just enter through the main entrance right there where that Casimir is walking. You can go to either side of the station. This is the left side. You can get on anywhere you like on the train and just go a couple rounds around the park. Now, let's see what else you can do. A walk down Main Street USA is always nice. You can visit any one of the shops. There's a whole number of different shops here. Um, selling all kinds of little trinkets and things or even... Uh, music and photographs and clothing, everything. Just be careful not to walk directly on the streetcar tracks because you never know if a horse-drawn streetcar will come by. That being said, they do ring the bell very loudly and you can hear the horse with its hooves clicking and clopping down the walkway. That being said, I just got off the horse-drawn streetcar and uh, somebody didn't even see the horse coming and the horse almost just plowed right into them. The horses are not trained to stop unless their trainers tell them to stop. <laughs> One of the first things I do is I go straight to Fantasyland and I ride the different Fantasyland rides. Usually rides like Snow White or Pinocchio's Daring Journey. Sometimes even the Carousel, although I don't do that myself. but. Um, there's also Mr. Toad's Wild Ride and Peter Pan. Pretty much any ride in Fantasyland is perfect to ride by yourself because usually the seating arrangement is designed so it's only for like one to three people at maximum. So it's actually perfect. You can ride by yourself and true, it, it might look weird launching from the Mr. Toad launch area into the ride all by yourself on a ride vehicle, but you're only in front of people for a brief moment and their judgmental eyes disappear as you go into the darkness. So, <laughs> so, 
So anyway, Dumbo is also a really good one. So like I said, pretty much any ride in Fantasyland is good to ride by yourself. Um, Storybook Land as well, but Storybook Land is a bit harder to ride um, because there's a lot of people around you and you're stuffed next to people you don't know. But another one of my favorites is Casey Jr. Circus Train, which is right up that way. That's also good to ride by yourself. The Alice in Wonderland ride, as well as the Mad Tea Party, are also really good rides to go on by yourself. The Matterhorn Bobsleds is also perfect for you roller coaster enthusiasts to ride by yourself because you can also get in the uh, in the single rider line. You just enter through the fast pass entrance on the right hand side there. Tell them you're a single rider. They'll put you in your own line so you can get on a bobsled. The bobsleds seat you in a single file row. So basically there's no one sitting next to you, only in front or behind you. So therefore it's also a really good ride to go on by yourself. It's a Small World is yet another example. It's a Small World seats you in a boat with about six rows of people. Now, when you ride by yourself, they'll put you in your own row all by yourself. So, usually, you'll either be put in the front or in the very back of the boat. That being said, you might be placed with other people in the boat, so you'll have to consider that if you find that awkward. If you like Disney stage shows, you can go to the Fantasyland Theater. They have plenty of giant, like, auditorium-like seating that you can just sit at, watch a show. Personally, I don't really watch Disney shows. Not live shows, I mean. But yes, anyway, we're heading into Toontown to show you another example. In Toontown, Roger Rabbit's Cartoon Spin is an example of a ride that you might enjoy going on by yourself. You see, there's two vehicles that go out in tandem on the ride. The both vehicles each only have one row, so likely you'd be seated by yourself in your own vehicle. But because the vehicles go out in tandem and you go through the whole ride together, uh, it might be one of those things where you might not feel comfortable riding it uh, by yourself because you'll feel like the people in the car next to you might be looking at you. That being said, I don't really have a fear of that anymore after being here for three years, having plenty of experience riding rides by myself, now I no long now it no longer bothers me. Pretty soon, Toontown City Hall will be home to a new attraction called Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, which will be a trackless ride system, although the vehicles will, once in a while, uh, link up into a chain to resemble a train, but then every once in a while we'll break apart to uh, view different exhibits and things within the ride. The Autopia is another ride you can go on by yourself. You get your own little car that you can drive around. Yes, you can do single rider on Space Mountain. However, you'll often be placed with someone else that you don't know, so take that into consideration. Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters is another one you can do by yourself. It's an Omnimover, a lot like uh, the Haunted Mansion ride vehicles. So basically, you get your own ride vehicle by yourself, and you can spin it around and blast at the different targets. However, since you'll be by yourself, it's not like you'll have anyone else's score to beat. Another good thing you can do by yourself is to find a nice little bench and sit and relax and enjoy the views. It's another one of those great things you can do when you have a whole lot of time to yourself. You'll find that when you're with a group of people, you often adopt a mentality of let's get on this ride, then let's get on that ride, and then let's get on this ride. You're going and rushing from one ride to another. But when you're by yourself and you've got all the time in the world, you can just sit and enjoy the ambiance of Disneyland. At the entrance to Adventureland lies Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. A highly underrated attraction in my opinion. It's also really great to sit and just relax in the courtyard, but when you actually go into the show, it's a great place to just sit for about 15 minutes, enjoy a nice little show in the air conditioning, and have your Dole Whip. The Jungle Cruise is another one of those attractions where I said it might, may or may not be enjoyable to ride by yourself. Now I know I said that I have no problem riding Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin by myself, but as you can see, when you get on a Jungle Cruise boat, you're packed in with a whole lot of people you don't know. 
So if that doesn't bother you, by all means, this is fun to ride by yourself. But if it does bother you, you might want to reconsider and just wait till you have a friend to enjoy the park with. When you need a break from the crowds, it's often nice to come over here to what used to be part of the Adventureland Bazaar. Now it's an indoor seating area with lots of tables and things so you can relax and get out of the sun and enjoy the air conditioning. This is one of those places though that gets extremely crowded during typical meal times like lunchtime and dinner. So plan around that part. Yes, the Indiana Jones Adventure does have single rider access. However, again, it's one of those situations where you'll be placed with a bunch of people you don't know. So take that into consideration. Tarzan's Treehouse is a fun attraction to experience by yourself. It involves a lot of walking and a lot of stairs, so be aware of that. But otherwise, it's really great and it's often forgot about. The sailing ship Columbia and the Mark Twain Riverboat are both really great attractions to experience by yourself because you have plenty of space to free roam around the vessels and not be locked in one little area with a bunch of people you don't know. Pirates of the Caribbean is another attraction that's really great to go on by yourself because often they'll put you in either the first or last row. The first row will get you pretty wet down the waterfalls, but the last row is actually really comfortable and is my preferred spot because often no one will even turn around to judge you for being by yourself. <laughs> anyway, another great attraction is the Haunted Mansion. I'd show you a closer up view, but it's behind construction walls for refurbishment. But anyway, with the Haunted Mansion, you get your own ride vehicle and you can just enjoy the ambiance of the attraction without having someone talk your ear off. Don't forget, when you're by yourself, be sure to explore the streets of New Orleans Square. It's a great area with lots of detail, lots of fun things to look at, shops and such, things like that, especially this one here. This one has a lot of Haunted Mansion themed stuff, especially Nightmare Before Christmas. Now, I've eaten at Cafe Orleans all by myself before. Um, often, when you come by yourself, they'll put you at a table for two. I know you don't really see any tables for two, but here's one. <laughs> uh, right here in the corner. This is where they often put me when I'm by myself. Um, and what I do is I end up facing outwards towards the river um, so I get a nice view. It is a little weird being by yourself at Cafe Orleans, so... You know, again, take that kind of thing into consideration. But otherwise, if you don't want to do uh, sit-down table service dining, you can come to any of the uh, the counter service restaurants such as French Market. They have really good food usually. Splash Mountain is pretty okay to go on by yourself. The only thing is that the seats are so close together that when you're on the ride, you're practically in someone else's lap. So that's something I would take into consideration. And lastly, we have uh, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, another attraction where if you go on by yourself, you get your own row and uh, it's pretty comfortable to go on. So I often ride Winnie the Pooh when I'm by myself, especially either early in the morning or late at night because in midday, like it is now, a line is starting to grow and the line, you'll be surprised, will actually fill up. So once we go full circle, we're back in Main Street over by the train station. The last thing you can do if you are here by yourself is you can actually go watch the show Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln. It's a really awesome show, well put together, um, and it takes a good uh, about 18 minutes long or so. Um, and it's, it's nice to hang out there in the air conditioning. It's great to do when you're by yourself. Anyway, that's going to do it for this little trip today. And... I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that uh, for you childless millennials who are not sure what you can do at the park when you're all by yourself and you're kind of worried that people are, you know, think you're weird for being here. Well, these are the attractions and things you can experience. And once again, uh, that kind of thought process, I've heard it a lot, but it's all in your head. People really don't care that you're here by yourself. Some people are curious, but it doesn't amount to anything awkward. Anyway, have a good day and thank you very much. And I hope you all have a magical day.